Welcome to part one of a really fun conversation that I had with my friend Alyssa from the channel Alyssa Works. Part two is going to be posted on Alyssa's channel. So if you haven't already checked out her channel, firstly, where have you been? But secondly, go and check it out. She also talks about product management and tech and careers, and most recently navigating careers while being a new mum. But this video is very much a full circle moment for me because I discovered Alyssa back in 2020 before I had published a single video on my own channel. And I remember admiring her courage to put herself out there and share her learnings and her experience. So I really feel like a small part of why I had the courage to put my first few videos out there was by seeing Alyssa talking about this world of product management that honestly not many people were doing on YouTube back in 2020. Alyssa and I crossed paths on Instagram in recent months and when we first connected we couldn't believe how much we had in common but especially how much of a similar career path we both had and we live on opposite ends of the planet, okay? She lives in the United States and I live in Australia and somehow we've had a really similar career journey. So that was really fun to connect with someone who is so far away yet going through so many similar experiences and challenges. And we thought, why not put our conversations into an old school YouTube collaboration style video so that you can also learn from our conversation. And yeah, that's exactly what you're about to watch. A really fun conversation with Alyssa. Watch out for part two coming out in a few days on Alyssa's channel. And yeah, without further ado, let's get into the conversation. Hi, Alyssa. Welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited we get to do this. Me too. It has been a long time in the making, possibly five goes to just coordinate today's time. So very excited to have you on. It's hard. Hey, we're on different parts of the planet, so it's hard Literally. coordinating, but Literally. we made it happen. Me too. I love that we are on different sides of the planet, yet we realize that we have quite a bit in common, especially when it comes to our career and our experiences. So yeah, I, yeah for that very reason, I'm really excited about some of the topics we are going to talk about today. Um, but let's just get like into it. Uh, feel free to do a really quick intro. I've already told my audience a little bit about you. And then I think I'd love to learn a bit more about your career path and what, what would be good for, for the people watching uh, to know about what you have done today with, with your career and your experiences. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of freaky how much we have in common with our careers. Um, I don't think you and I knew how much we had in common, in fact, until we talked for the first time. Um, so hi everyone. I'm Elisa. Um, I also have a YouTube channel that focuses primarily on product and tech and career advice. Um, I, let's see, I, I'll, I'll take it from the top with my education. Um, I got a degree in MIS, which is management information systems. Um, it's a degree that was in the business school, but it kind of combines business and technology. I had no idea what product management was at the time, but that degree is like very well suited for product management. Um, right out of school, I got started at Deloitte, a consulting firm, um, worked there for a few years. We, you worked in consulting too. That's one of our similarities. Um, it, I had so many experiences from consulting. I'm so appreciative of, but consulting was not for me. Um, I worked a lot in like the compliance and IT auditing world, which was just not quite doing it for me. Um, but from there, I was able to transition into a product role at a fintech company. Um, they were looking to build a compliance product and I had some subject matter expertise, which was awesome. Um, from there, I've been mostly in product. So worked in fintech, uh, worked in product at a marketing tech company and then at a creative tech company. Um, and that brings me to where I am now, which is actually not technically in product. Um, I'm the head of growth for a small startup, but the startup product is for product managers. So it's still in like the product realm. I feel like I still count as a product person right now. So that's a little bit of my background. Anika, go through your background because we have a lot in common. <laughs> I know. I almost don't need to because I can just say very similar. You're just um, like ditto. <laughs> I know, almost. Uh, so yeah, studied business but had a majored in information systems. It's funny that. Um, and again, I kind of felt like that degree puts you in this in this great in-between of technology and business. And just like you, I had no idea how I'm actually going to apply this thing because 
there were no roles that were like directly relevant, but you could do so many things. And product was definitely not something I had ever heard of. Um, but it, it really nicely aligns to product, um, which sits in between business and tech and design, of course. So yeah, that's what I studied. Honestly, I feel like the majority of what I have learned has been post university. I don't, I really just don't feel like I learned that much. Um, I was a good student, but If I was to go back, I don't, especially in 2024, Mm -hmm. I feel like I wish I just did something more practical or maybe just volunteered or tried my own thing. Like who knows? Yeah. Um, But that's, that's all I knew at the time. And then I got into consulting, which honestly was, it was put on a pedestal for us during university. It was like, if you got into a big four, like (laughs) you've made it. (laughs) I don't know what it was like for you. Um, Yeah, I know. But yeah, it was like the prestigious graduate role. And so I went, I was at KPMG. I was also in risk consulting. So we did IT audits. Um, I don't know what else we did. Which by honest. the way, it's like you're testing password complexity sometimes. Yeah. Like, it, yeah. Was, it was boring. <laughs> it was not <Yeah>. stimulating. <laughs> no. Yeah. It's like you're, you're doing auditing, but not on numbers, <laughs> but on like internal processes and controls. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was... It was, you know, I lasted about three and a half to four years. And then KPMG actually gave me the opportunity once to go to this thing called a 48 hour startup weekend. I don't know if you've heard of that, Alyssa. It's like all no, over the world. I haven't. Yeah. They sponsored this event um, and I went along and it's basically you spend 48 hours. There's lots of random people with different skills and you just get together. You pitch an idea if you have one and you just try and like over 48 hours, you, you see what you could bring uh, a make of this business idea you have and you present it and you can win prizes and stuff. And that was kind of how I got introduced to the world of startups and the fact that I could actually do something a little bit different or potentially entrepreneurial because I never, ever thought I could. And yeah, then I ended up getting into the world of tech companies, which again, was just a lot more hands-on than writing reports and doing audits. So that was great. Um, So I worked at a New Zealand startup, which is where I grew up, Uh, Zero, if anyone is familiar with that. And then I did my own thing in between. So then I chopped and changed between startup and trying to build something myself. Next startup, oh, not startup, actually. I went to Shopify after that. Very much not a startup. Not a startup. (laughs) Going through hyper growth at the time. And then I kind of did my own thing again. And then I went, yeah. So it's been like this, like startup, big tech company, startup, big tech company. And- Mm -hmm. Yeah, I only got my first official product role probably five years ago because I didn't know what product was before that. And I I did like business analysis and I did customer success. I did random roles, which was actually really good because I got exposure to so many other things. And yeah, then I really just fell in love with the world of product. And I do not plan to look back, um, even though I might be interested in doing something a little bit related like you are now. Mm. Well, I feel like all of the different experience that you had, like leading into product, like that, that is the perfect way to learn product, like working in startups and doing different roles in tech companies. Like, yeah, that's it. That's the training for product management right there. I know. I know. I, I don't know if you feel this, but I think when you try to tell someone who's an aspiring to get into product, something like that, like go and do all these different things. Like I, I understand that it maybe doesn't make sense. Because you're like, well, I just want to go and do this one role, but you're saying I should go and get experience in like lots of different roles. But yeah, like you, not to be cliche, but you really do wear multiple hats and you do everything and anything and you, yeah, things you've never done before. And what better way to do that if you're not, yeah, if you haven't experienced it. So yeah, totally agree with you. Now we kind of touched on this already, but just going back to consulting for a second, would you recommend to others if they had the opportunity to try consulting or potentially start their career with consulting? Well, first of all, I've many times questioned why I ever went into consulting because I can't emphasize how little thought went into it. Mm. Like my um, second to last year in school, I got an internship with um, Deloitte and I chose them specifically because they paid the highest out of mm. all the other offers I could get. Mm. Um, and then they offered a full-time job at the end of that summer. And I was like, yeah, of course. Okay. Then I don't have to do anything my senior year of school. Great. Um, so no thought went into it. 
honestly, like when I was in it, I was like, oh my gosh, I made a mistake. This is not what I'm interested in at all. And transparently, like it's hard to, it's hard to do career changes, right? So like when I was looking for something out of consulting, I was like, all I know is consulting. It's so Mm -hmm. hard to like find something else. But um, the more I've like grown in my career, the more appreciative I am of my consulting experience. When people see I have that experience on my resume, especially like, you know, those first few years, like three to five years outside of consulting, like they would look at that and be like, this person knows how to be a professional. Yeah. They can talk to executives. They know how to do presentations, write formal documents. They can write, you know, good looking emails. Like people just know that if you have that experience, like you're able to do those things. And like, I look back on it and I'm like, yeah, my first product job, I remember starting and people were like, yeah, you're going to have to present that to the CPO and CEO. And I was Mm -hmm. like, okay. I was like, yeah, no. I mean, like in consulting, you do that kind of stuff a lot. Mm -hmm. And so it really does prepare you in a lot of ways for just like professionalism 101. Um, And I also think like when I look back on it, while I didn't appreciate it at the time, I think consulting is a really unique role outside of school because you're working with a lot of other young people Mm. um and it was like where i formed my first like non-school friends um and you know if you start in other companies you're gonna find friends of course but like consulting was unique in that it was like this giant cohort of people my age like like, almost i don't know about if you experienced that like we found what? a big, like a little bit of a cult following. A in little like, bit of a cult. Yeah. A bit, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Good friends. Friendly cult. Yeah. Yeah. Friendly cult. <laughs> we drink Kool-Aid. It's fine. Yes, um, we did. We did. <laughs> um, but I look back on it and I'm like, that was a unique time in my yeah. career where like I just formed a lot of friendships. Yeah. Um, it was actually through a friend in uh, consulting that I met my husband. Wow. So maybe yes, yeah, you should. Aww. That's how you'll meet your husband. Yes. I'm just kidding. Um, what do you think? Would you recommend I, people start in consulting? Um, I've never thought about whether people should start in consulting, but I agree with everything yeah. sorry, you said. Um, I, I think it creates like this foundation for your career because like you're right, anyone can look at it. And because people know what big four companies do, they kind of know at what level you might already operate. Like you've set a minimum standard and it, yeah. So they know you're professional. You can write emails, you can talk to anyone, which is so important. And yeah, I mean, I remember as a graduate being thrown into interviews left, right and center with important people running businesses. And I had no idea what I was doing, but all I had to kind of do was ask them questions. So also a really good way to just learn, um, especially if you have different clients and it's a bonus if you have them in different industries because you get a glimpse into, uh, you get a bit of variety. Mm-hmm. For sure. What you want to do? or if you're interested in business at, in general or lots of different things, then maybe it's not a bad, bad thing to try. And remember we were in risk consulting. There are cool parts. Of, <laughs> there are cool there are parts. Cooler, parts. <laughs> cooler things you can be doing in a big four. Yeah, so that's take true. auditing and risk, risk IT auditing. You can do like really cool stuff. So that's yeah. True. And you're so right. I have met some of my best lifelong friends in that graduate program we were in. We, uh, we used, some of us used to live together in like a shared house when we were younger. Um, yeah, lots of people have actually, one of my best friends met her husband through KPMG, who would have known? And there's some more stories like that. So I don't know what it is. <laughs> I don't know. You're like traveling together with other yeah. people. I don't know. You're working hard. It's a good way to get close with people. Yeah. You're working long hours. You're working hard. You're probably partying together because that's kind of all you did. <laughs> that's all we yeah. did. <laughs> worked in the big four. Um, okay. Yeah, pretty much. I feel like we each lightly, lightly touched on it, but then we broke into product management. And it's such a hard thing 
to to do career changes. So what was your experience like then transitioning? Was it hard? So I feel like mine was very gradual. Um, Mm. It wasn't like a a harsh change. And honestly, I didn't even realize I was making the change because it was consulting, business analyst, kind of do some startup foundry stuff, customer success, and then more startup stuff. And then I kind of just got into this product thing. So, but yes, it was still really hard. And I think this is a really good example of even if you studied something technology and business related, even if you have worked in a tech company in a different role, it was still hard to pick up what I had to do as a product manager. And to like, it probably took, it took me more than six months for everything to really click. Um, And even then, so many of the times I didn't know what I was doing and if I was doing the right thing. So yeah, the, the career change aspect of it wasn't as hard for me because I was in that world already, but actually yeah. knowing how to be a product person was really hard. Um, so it doesn't, I don't think it necessarily matters how much experience you have or what you've done, like depending on what industry you're in, what your team looks like, what your product is, there's always going to be that challenge, which I think is also what makes product really amazing and interesting is every role can be so different and varied. Um, so yeah, that's that was how it was for me. But what about for you? Was it a bit more of a harsher change or what was that like? I got my first product role in 2016. Yep. And that wasn't that long ago, but I swear like product still felt like a new thing. Yeah. Um, and so when I was looking for a product or when I was looking for something outside of consulting, it's like, I didn't even know exactly what I was looking for. Um, and I was interviewing for, for different types of positions at random companies. It was like wherever I could get an interview, essentially. I was like, I have no experience except for it auditing who will take me. (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) and then when I, um, a friend of mine had started in product, it, was interesting to me because I was like, wait a minute, this is a lot or very similar to what I actually did study in school. I felt like my degree, it did really help for the product management career path. Um, And so when I started doing like this interview process for a product management role, I was just like, I have to have this job. I like put blood, sweat and tears into it. I was like, I will work all night. I I don't care. I want to you know, I had a presentation and a writing sample and all these different things. Um, and yeah, it's like, once I found it, um, I, yeah, it it was fine, but it took me a while to find the career path. And I think now, like, and this, this is a little bit, um, of a different topic, but now breaking into product management, I think is like even harder. Mm Um, and I, but I think it's interesting, like you broke into product by um, being in different types of roles and then like finding yourself in product. Well, this is not how I broke into product. Like Mm -hmm. most people who break into product, at least that I've seen, it's because they were in like support or customer success or marketing or engineering or design and they transitioned into product management within the company. Mm -hmm. Do you see that too? Yeah, I I think I see a mix. I don't know like Mm -hmm. how it's trending. But yeah, I think a lot of people make that natural transition, which is, which is great if you have the opportunity to, but I feel like I'm more, 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 I'm seeing more people hear about product and wanting to try it, even though they may not have had the background. And I, I, I'm going to say YouTube and TikTok played a, played a big part in this back in like 2020, because like channels blew up, everyone was talking about it obviously people didn't have much else to do. So, um, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's how I started my channels. Um, yeah. and I, I realized, wow, so many people are interested. Obviously the tech tech companies were booming during 2020 and 2021. So I personally feel like that's when people started discovering it. I don't know for sure. And yeah, I think you're right in 2016, I definitely hadn't heard of it. And I started yeah. my first product role in 2018 you can come from any background. And I always say this to people is there is no defined path for what you should have done or what your skills should be that should limit whether you can and cannot do product. Um, And honestly, so many of the soft skills are so important, like communication and being empathetic and all of that stuff. And 
sometimes the harder part is the context of the domain that you are in. Like right now, I'll, maybe we'll talk about this in your video, but right now with, with the, <laughs> the startup that I'm in, man, there is so much technical regulatory jargon mm, that I don't yeah. understand. And I, I've been doing product for a while and I think I'm a good product. I'm a, I'm a good PM. That doesn't help me if I don't understand how the industry works. So yeah, yeah it would be really interesting to get into some of that maybe in your video and on your yeah. channel around some of our challenges specifically. But yeah, that is that is kind of how we both got into product. And it's, it is interesting. That's one thing we have a little bit different. So yeah, yeah, um, for sure. So what, um, like, what would you tell people who want to break yeah. into product? Do you okay. think, because there's different ways right now, but what do you think is like the best approach? So in my last video, I actually mentioned this a little bit. I think in 2024, right now, given all of this, the circumstances of the world, macroeconomic situations, the, the state of tech companies, hiring layoffs, all of that, I honestly think that one of the best ways for you to at least use your time at the moment, it might not guarantee getting a product role, is to just try and get as much hands-on experience as you can. And by that, I mean of course, keep applying and, you know, look, keep looking out. But as we've just said, it's really difficult. So I don't want to just tell people yeah. to go and do that typical stuff. So I'm going to say right now, yeah. you might actually have an interesting opportunity to dabble in maybe building something yourself. Like that doesn't mean you need to code, but think of an idea or a problem, go and do some research, write a survey and post it somewhere. See, like yeah. maybe you can do some mock-ups and wireframes, even if it's on paper. Just think about like how you might bring something to life. There are no code tools if you want. There's ChatGPT uh, and ChatPRD yeah. as well, which we will get Alyssa to talk more about because mm -hmm. I'm so interested in it. So yeah, I think you have a really unique opportunity where maybe you have a little bit of time <coughs> because things are quiet in the market. It is really hard to get into, into product and any so many tech roles. So maybe just see how you can set yourself apart and build something, maybe write a blog about it, put that on your resume and think about things in that more practical way. So that's, that's my viewpoint at the moment. Um, but what about yours? We have a chat PRD YouTube channel. <laughs> so check that out too. Check out all these channels that we're talking about. Um, and in that channel, I did like an interview of Claire Vo, who's the creator of chat PRD. And I asked this exact question and she pretty much echoed exactly what you said. She's like, build something yes. like you get the experience, <laughs> like find a problem in the market, use no code tools if you have to, and just build something. And she's yeah. like, try to sell it. Like, yeah, you're learning how a full company runs then. Mm. And that's like all very important for a product manager to know. Yeah. Um. So I love that. I think like, uh, especially in this market, like you're right, looking for the traditional roles is really hard um that being said there there's there's other ways to do it i like i always recommend um you can certainly look at associate product manager roles if you don't have product experience if you just even google like apm openings like there's different forums that show you all the openings and which companies are have open applications um so i think those apm programs are great if you want to start at a big company and don't have product experience I think they're highly competitive, so yeah, it's but it's are. worth a shot. I also tell people like what I told you, like I see people break into product so frequently by internally transferring. And yeah. like I've helped a lot of people do that too, just within organizations I've worked in. And so if you're struggling to find that first product role, consider, consider another entry level role in a tech org. Mm -hmm. And you can even talk to the hiring manager during the process. Like, you know, my five year plan is to be able to transition to product. Yeah. Um, and maybe you can form a relationship with the product team and do like a monthly lunch and learn with them or something. Like, mm -hmm. um, just learn from that product team that you have access to. Um, and then if something opens up, like you be a great candidate because you know the company so well. Yeah. Um, so that's advice I always give. Um, yeah. And then the last piece of advice I give is like, think of products you know really well mm -hmm. um, and apply apply to those companies. And you can even like 
send in or in the cover letter or in a LinkedIn message, like write your feature feedback. And here's, here's the problems I would recommend solving and how I would solve it. Like that looks so good to hiring managers. So I think that's another interesting way to try to break in as well. Mm. I love all those. They're so, so practical. What I really like about the last one is that just applying amongst being one of hundreds, if not thousands of people, like you're kind of just leaving things to luck, right? And to some extent it is luck anyway. But yeah, if you can be proactive and maybe reach out in addition to your application to a hiring manager on LinkedIn, and maybe you can give them an insight into, hey, I've actually looked at your product and this is what I think about it. It's just a really small way to stand out because I can tell you that no one wants to be going through hundreds of CVs. Like that is not a fun process, no matter you have an HR team or you don't. So yeah, if you have someone that kind of shortlists themselves, then you're more likely to to talk to them. Cool. So we have talked quite, a, we've, we've teased a little bit around career changes we've made. We haven't gone fully into what those changes are, um, but I think it's something we should talk about a little bit more. And for that part of this video, we are going to be going over to Alyssa's channel. So be sure to check out that video because it's going to be getting a little bit more juicy with <laughs> yeah, what has and hasn't worked, challenges we've had, and some new and exciting stuff that we are currently doing and currently navigating. So yeah, with that being said, we're going to wrap this up. And thank you, Alyssa, for being on my channel today. And let's go to yours and talk a little bit more about what we're currently doing and our thoughts on our previous roles. Sounds amazing. Let's, let's hop on over to my channel. We'll see you soon. All right. Thanks. Bye. And that is it for my conversation with Alyssa part one. Remember to check out part two, which will be posted on Alyssa's channel in the coming days. And if you want to see us having more conversations like this one, or even focusing on a specific topic or a specific question, please leave some comments below because we would be glad to film some follow up. So hope you enjoyed that one. And if you got this far, thank you so much as always. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.